so this next problem I have, 2x cubed is equal to negative 54. So it's tempting here to go ahead and just divide by 2 and then take the cube root. However, you'd be missing two solutions that you can have. So for this one, I'm really wanting to factor it. So I need to add 54 to the other side. So all my terms are on one side to get 2x cubed plus 54 is equal to 0. And then I can go ahead and divide every term by 2 to get x cubed plus 27 is equal to 0. And now I have a sum of cubes that I can go ahead and factor. So rewriting this as a sum of cubes, I really have x cubed plus 3 cubed is equal to 0. So that means that my a is x and my b is 3. And so now I can put this in my factored form. So remember, I have soap, so same sign, opposite, always positive. I have a plus b, so x plus 3. And then b, a squared, so x squared. And then my last term is going to be b squared, so 3 squared, which is 9. And then a times b in the middle. And now I have this factor, so I can go ahead and set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So I have x plus 3 equals 0. x squared minus 3x plus 9 is equal to 0. So solving this first one, I get that x equals negative 3. But now I need to use the quadratic formula to solve this next one. So my a is 1, and my b is negative 3, and my c is 9. And so I get that x is equal to negative b, so 3, plus or minus... The square root of b squared, so negative 3 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 9, all over 2 times a, which is 1. Negative 3 squared, I get 9. 9 minus 4 times 1 times 9, it's going to get me negative 27. And then when I simplify that radical, I get 3 plus or minus 3i root 3 all over 2. So that means my answers for this one are x equals negative 3, 3 plus or minus 3i root 3 over 2. Okay, so I get another one. So this one I have 2x cubed plus 16 is equal to 0. I see I have a GCF of 2, so I can divide every term by 2. And I get x cubed plus 8 is equal to 0. And I see here again that I have a sum of cubes. And that's because I have x cubed plus 2 cubed is equal to 0. So factoring this out. Look at my signs, I have same, opposite, always positive. My a here is x, so I have x, my b is 2, so I have x plus 2. a squared is x squared, b squared is 4, a times b is 2x. And since I have two things multiplying equals 0, that means either 1 is equal to 0, so I have x plus 2 equals 0, or x squared minus 2x plus 4 is equal to 0. Solving that first one, I get that x is equal to negative 2. And then now I need to use the quadratic formula to solve this next one. So x equals negative b, so 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 2 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 4, all over... 2 times a, which is 1. Negative 2 squared, I get 4. 4 minus 16, I get negative 12. So I have 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 over 2. If I simplify that, I get 2i root 3 over 2. 
which is just going to equal to 1 plus or minus i root 3 when I divide everything by 2. So that means my two answers are negative 2, 1 plus or minus i root 3. Okay, looking at this next one, I have x to the fourth plus 9x squared is equal to negative 20. First, I want all my terms on one side, so I'm going to add 20 to both sides. And I get x to the fourth plus 9x squared plus 20 is equal to 0. Okay, now looking at this one, I notice that my highest exponent is 4. I divide that by 2, and I get the next highest. And then I go to no variable. So that means I can actually rewrite this to look like a quadratic. So I can rewrite this as x squared squared plus 9x squared plus 20 is equal to 0. And now I can factor this like I would a quadratic. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 20 and add to 9. And looking at my factors, I see that's going to be 4 and 5. So this can be factored to be x squared plus 4. x squared plus 5 is equal to 0. Now I can set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve. So I have x squared plus 4 is equal to 0, or x squared plus 5 is equal to 0. And now both of these I can solve using square roots. So subtract 4 from both sides, and I get x squared is equal to negative 4. And then I can take the square root, and I get that x is equal to plus or minus 2i, since I'm taking the square root of a negative number. Solving x squared plus 5, I can subtract 5 from both sides, and I get x squared is equal to negative 5. And then take the square root, and I get that x is equal to plus or minus i square root of 5. So that means my answers here are going to be plus or minus 2i, plus or minus i square root of 5. Okay, let's look at one more. Here I have x to the fourth minus 7x squared plus 12 is equal to 0. So here I see I do have another one that I can rewrite in quadratic form. I can rewrite this to say x squared squared minus 7x squared plus 12 is equal to 0. So now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to equal negative 7. And I see the two numbers that complete those requirements are going to be negative 3 and negative 4. So this becomes x squared minus 3 times x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Now I can go about this a couple of different ways. I could go ahead and refactor this x squared minus 4 to be x plus 2, x minus 2. Or you could just go ahead and solve straight from here. Either way will work. I'm just going to go ahead and go straight to solving. So I'm going to set each of these equal to 0. Solving this first one, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And then taking the square root, I get that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. Then I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And taking the square root here, I get that x is equal to plus or minus 2. So my answers here are going to be x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 plus or minus 2.